Rev and go, innit? Do you use a recluse clutch? So everyone listen carefully to this answer. Welcome back. Going off the comments that you've all been waiting for. Not all of you, but several of you. There's actually, if you, you've seen the title, so you know what's going to happen. There's already one of these on the channel, which a lot of you clearly haven't been able to go and find, judging by how many people want to see a bike check. Isn't it, Ed? Well, 100,000 people found it. Is that what's on? I believe so. Go on. Big love to you, 100,000. Right, well, that was last year's, and then this is this year's, despite there not being a... Are you alright? You all right? Alright, dog. Do they stink? Two days ago, this was more or less a brand new bike. It's been rode twice since then. It was supposed to look all lovely so Ed could get some nice B-roll and stuff and go, wow, everyone go, wow, your bike's so lush. I've just twatted a tree, flat out in third gear, trying to get a nice picture. <laughs> we were gonna wash it, bullshit spray it, place it on a nice stand with some lights and do all fun fancy B-roll, but now there's a massive dinger in the exhaust. We're just keeping it real. So here we go. Yeah, it's, believe it or not, it's actually new. Here's my new practice bike. Uh, Husqvarna TE300i. I believe is the technical terminology for it. Should we go back to front, top to bottom, or just random? Uh, two stroke or four stroke? <laughs> <laughs> two stroke. So, two stroke. This is what I would use for extreme races, majority of the time. Um, what I used in Israel in the previous round, next round in certain fact I'll use this for the full hard enduro world championship this year, looking at the calendar. Plus the British Extreme Enduro Championship. Alright, starting up top. Pro taper grips. Do you know what I might actually do? Get the actual name of the grips and bars to put an end to all the people asking what kind of bars I use. Good luck, because they're the most hardest bars to find. Oh, see, they just see Husqvarna on them. Pro taper, half waffle, medium compound, I do believe. Domino, billet, throttle housing. I don't know if you can buy them or if that's a factory part, but different. Starter button, kill switch button. Obviously, wire and harness is um, different to stock, so like our wire and harness gets built around the bike, so each mechanic kind of does their own thing and knows exactly where every... Uh, there's a lot of birds going on in here. That's all right, we like birds. So we're in nature, we thought we'd leave the garage since England's delivering such beautiful weather conditions. It's actually nice being outside, isn't it? So yeah, every mechanic kind of does their own little thing with the wire and harness. Um, but anyway, I like... Start a button on the right, kill switch button on the left. You Americans will find that a bit weird, I'd imagine. Light switch, little pull switch here on this nice little carbon bit. I'm sure Ed will do a slow-mo and put this little carbon bit in there. Um, that's obviously factory. 9 millimeter clutch pump, makes the clutch a little bit lighter for them long days whilst riding. Husqvarna power parts, little bling bits, but also allow it to move if you have a crash. Uh, factory Brembo front brake, 10 millimeter pump on there, a bit more aggressive. Corn valve forks, obviously a few videos ago I tried to explain about suspension and I did a very bad job of that. But for extreme, have my set up reasonably soft, well, very soft in fact. I can't even remember what folk springs are. It's that long since I've rode two stroke properly. I didn't, haven't done any testing yet this year because I did super endure and then I've had a bad wrist. So, very soft and reasonably fast on the rebound so you can move the bike and gives the bike quite a light feeling having the fast rebound. But then obviously, you've got to counter counterbalance that with expecting to be kicked quite a lot um, you're never ever gonna have perfect suspension setup because there's that many different elements to a hard enduro race um, but in my opinion you can gain more time on the difficult sections than you can lose on the fast sections so going on the softer side and having a little bit of a sketchy sketchy ride for the fast sections is worth it for being able to have maximum traction and straight line up them difficult hills. Mitchell and tires and mooses, front and back. Uh, run the 9000 big tire for everything. Don't matter what kind of race it is, super enduro, hard enduro, cross country. Um, 
change the mousse size slightly depending on the race but always the 90 hundred on the front XL rims uh, Brembo discs very very strong them touch wood don't think I've ever bent a disc since I started using them a few years ago pull strap on the front hopefully you don't have to use this but well they're getting actually less and less most races where there's no outside assistance now so these are kind of getting made redundant unless it's really hard and we have to help each other hand guards obviously lots of trees in enduro uh it's often cold raining mud all of the elements thrown at you not a particular big fan of hand guards i like super enduro in the winter when we don't have to use them but it is what it is cool and fun arguably one of the most important things for hard enduro fmf front pipe which this maybe isn't the best adver advertisement for it. However, the bike still actually runs quite well like this. I've just been, I rode afterwards for like 20 minutes after I'd done that. And Ed's just rode it around the garden and said it's still quite good. And despite this rather large dint, the front, the engine flange and all the front of the engine is still intact. So it's kind of like the dints, which is obviously gonna, you're not gonna, if you've, if you've paid for it, you'd be quite upset by doing that. But at the same time, your front of the engine's fine and you've not done any major damage. But anyway, FMF front pipe and rear silencer, uh, big fan. Love the power that that gives. Uh, quite good for low end torque when you're pulling up the hills, like that. Rev and go, isn't it? Do you use a recluse clutch? So everyone listen carefully to this answer. So you don't have to ask anymore. Yes, however, not the automatic one. I can definitely guarantee it. I don't, Graham doesn't, nobody does. Show us. Not automatic. <laughs> Recluse basket, because uh, it's billet, so it's a little bit stronger than the stock one. Um, standard clutch pack, um, standard spring, well, diaphragm, everything else standard. Standard slave cylinder on the other side. A lot of the guys, I'm the only, suppose I'm the only person on the team now, so I can't really speak on behalf of my teammates because I don't have any. We're running the Recluse one, I prefer the stunt stock Brembo one. This is a big talking point because they don't come stock with them. Yeah, they don't come stock. We put them on obviously for safety. Um, you can buy a kit to convert to your stock engine. To be honest, I've also never ever had to use that in a race. I'd prefer to keep it that way. Different brake tip, a little bit sharper, bit more feel. I'm guessing this is aluminium. I'm not sure what material it is. No, it must be steel because it bends like fuck. I honestly don't know what material it is, but I find it bends rather than breaks, so rather than it snap off and then it'd be really difficult, you just end up with a bent up. But it sounds a bit weird kind of preparing to bend your bike, but you've seen the, the kind of shit we do in races, like it's gonna happen sooner or later. You're gonna, you're gonna clip a rock. Wrap the foot pegs uh, on all my bikes. Minus five, five mil down, five mil back for extreme, same as I run in Super Enduro. Rock solid, probably the strongest foot peg out there. Uh, and just all around best feel I find. Uh, don't clog up the mud, because we've got no middle piece. Lovely stuff. What else we have on? Skid plate, very important for hard enduro, well, essential. Otherwise, you're going to put all in your engine probably sooner or later and squash your frame. And if you have a Husqvarna or Gas Gas or B or any other bike other than a KTM, good linkage protection and also slider so you can cruise over the logs with ease. Track shock, talked a bit about suspension earlier on the softer side. Um, I run a lot of sag on my extreme bike just because I feel like it makes the bike lighter and easier to move. It's probably I run too much really because I struggle a lot with my front end lifting but that's mainly just how I feel comfortable for the rest of the track. I'm slowly jacking my back end up a little bit more to try and get on Manny's level on them climbs. Oh, oh! Did you see that? The forces are on our side. I'm so out of touch, I can't remember where anything I over. 45 spring on the rear. I can't, I, I think it's 4.3 springs in the forks. It's really bad that I don't know that. That's how rusty I am with two strokes. Anyway, 45 spring on the rear. Stock linkage on this bike. Super Enduro, I want a longer one. Stock linkage on this bike. Uh, there we go. Factory power valve, you can't have one of them, but that's what we want. Uh, pull strap on the rear. This one actually gets used quite a bit when you're 
maneuvering around on ledges and cliff faces and stuff. Should I move up a bit? Oh god, oh god. That's all that's just at the angle it looks shit now, don't it? Yeah. In there. No, 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 that's what that stands for. Oh, Seat cover, as Ed's just put, very important. Spend a lot of time in near vertical positions. Important you don't slide back. I actually rode someone else's bike up a hill because they were stuck yesterday whilst riding and they had the, a terrible seat cover on and it made me appreciate mine all that more. I run a little bump here, it's difficult to see. Can you see it on the camera? Not really. Oh yeah, goes up a bit more. Very small bump, not like as aggressive as like a motocross one to stop for like acceleration. I just like to be a little bit higher when I'm off the back of the bike. Uh, disc shock fin thing, also very important. You go through rocks quite a lot. Yeah, that's about it. XRM, oh, steel sprocket, super sprocks, a uh, lot of rocks, gullies, roots. You need a solid sprocket. Uh, my gearing is 12.49. I think I've run that pretty much every race last year. Uh, I would actually quite like to go 48, but because of how short it would make the wheelbase, I choose not to. And that's why I really, I use an XC first gear uh, in my gearbox, just to try and make the ratio from first to second a little bit smaller, a little bit closer together. Here's a question for you. From the last video to now, what have you changed? To be honest, very little. From the last video to now, I think there's pretty much nothing. Probably this bump in my seat, and that's it. I don't even think I've changed anything suspension-wise. We've got new throttle cables now, although they're not on this bike. But that's that's just, that's it. I put on the gram, what you want to know about my bike, is what I put on. <laughs> First one, handlebar choice. Husqvarna, stock, motocross bend which is lower than stock enduro bend by a considerable amount uh they're very low they're almost like in renfall 999 in poor taper terms what breaks brembo is it a pure beast yes you actually did just say it's very fast yeah it's quick this one uh yeah oh, i know why oh i didn't good well done edward it's fast because i usually run uh 165 gram flywheel weight but Stan took it off to take to Israel and left it in Italy so at the main moment I've only got 100 gram flywheel weight on usually I run 165 that's why she's snappy that's why she's a bit wick does it lift in every gear <laughs> yes what color power valve does it have pink why not using stock rims just a little bit stronger stock forks or aftermarket stocks stocks good aftermarket is just a little bit safer to use shock linkage standard yes gear ratio 1249 for well, the big 450, we're not on about the big 450 now, Soz. I don't actually know much about the 450 because I don't really race them, so I don't ever test 450, I just get what I'm given. Cylinder head, stock, yes, ish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer engine tuned grunt or high end uh, grunt? Bottom end power is better for more stuff. Tires, Michelin, always. What U sweep pack do you use that? What the f that got to do with a motorbike? Right, we'll wrap this thing up now. We can all go home. Uh, couple of I, I've answered most questions. Um, a lot of them about gearing. Twelve forty nine. Sag. I said I run quite a lot, but I usually run between 41, 43, depending on the track, depending on how I feel. Um, usually run my forks at line three, sometimes two and a half. I think that was about it for all the the serious suggestions. Recluse. It is not automatic, but it is a recluse. Handlebars, stock width. Triple clamp offset, 22 mil stock. Used to do 20, gone back to 22. And I think that's it for the serious ones. Uh, wheelbase, ax axle to axle. About that big. Gear rocks, mapping. Mapping, depending on the race, depending on where we are, but my bike does different mapping to yours anyway, so you don't need to, that makes no difference. Any secret bits you can't tell us about? That was actually one of the, like, the questions being on twice. Well, yeah, but as there is a secret, I can't tell you. Why is the rider a fucking nutcase? Graham's <laughs> left, there's no nutcases riding for the team anymore. What are you on about? A few questions, don't run tubes ever. I, I don't run, sorry, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but I don't run tubes ever or tubeless, I always run, Michelin tyres and Michelin mooses. 
How much does it weigh? I have no idea. Lack of titanium going on though. At one point we used to get titanium bolts put in my engine, but they've cut back on that. Tight f***s. Let me cut f***s out. A bit aggressive towards my employees, isn't it? <laughs> employees? Employers. Right, that'll do. Comment in this video down below if there's any more questions you want us to go over. If you've got any more questions, just do serious ones and don't ask, like, for secret shit because it's a secret um thanks for watching there's two mismatch vlogs on the way that i'm busy editing so they'll probably be out with between now and six weeks time i can't tell you when but anyway thanks for watching see you in a bit